Um, our next speaker is uh, Brother Shamarke Dubot from uh, Victoria City Council, uh, who has uh, been an amazing person who has touched so many aspects of what what caused Islamophobia, what drive Islamophobia in his life. And he's been able to overcome them and still uh, have an attitude of resilience and care. He was a former refugee who fled the civil war in Somalia at the age of eight and spent 20 years seeking safe haven until Canada offered a home in 2012. Uh, he has contributed to the development and betterment of life for Canadians uh, in his city as well as throughout the country. In October 2018, he was elected as uh, the first uh, Black uh, refugee, Somali, and Muslim city councillor uh, in the city of Victoria. Um, and Shamarke is uh, also one of uh, our closest uh, colleagues uh, in, in city councils in British Columbia and has done amazing work to help address uh, not only Islamophobia, but hate and discrimination at all levels uh, towards Canadians. Thank you so much for joining us today, Shamarke, and we're honored to have you with us. Thank you for having me. It's, it's just an amazing to see all leaders join today and thank you for all the work. It's always such a privilege to work alongside with you. And hello, my name is Shamak Dubo. I'm a Victoria city councillor, but also the first black city councillor elected in Victoria since 152 years. And I'm also a fellow of UN Human Rights Council. So I'm joining you today from the capital city of British Columbia. And I would like to acknowledge and show my respect and gratitude to the Linkwankins people and whose traditional territory that I'm joining you virtually. And the song is Squamat and Wasagans people whose historical relationships with the land continue to this day. And including those of us who came a decade ago or those of us who came hundred years ago as settlers, as immigrants in this generation or generations past. And those of us who came here involuntarily from fleeing from persecution or human rights violation or from genocide. And I make this acknowledgement not as a footprint of historical footnote, but really commitment to the true and lasting reconciliation with indigenous people. As I said earlier, it's really great to see all levels of government and community leaders. And I'm so happy to say I'm grateful to know many of you. And, and although I would love to mention names, but it will take most of my time because a lot of amazing leaders are here. And it's really nice to see that and the statement made, and especially explicit statement naming Islamophobia, uh, because uh, we shouldn't leave to the Muslim community and, and Muslim leaders and Muslim members to speak alone. We must take a stand and stand in solidarity and speak when we see hate and racism. I'm speaking today as a city leader. And, and I particularly, I want to speak a little bit about cities because cities are often on the front line of emergency response as uh, exemplified during the COVID-19 pandemic. The racial justice, call for racial justice we saw on our streets and they reinforced by the recent weather disasters events, all of which has exacerbated the existing inequalities and disproportionately impacted community members who are already vulnerable. And why do I mention that? Because for local leaders to really advocate for, a, for just and inclusive communities and really to maintain the courage and the compassion in order to ensure the safety and the well being of all their constituencies and their communities. And, and that's why we're here today to really speak about how we can ensure 
the safety of all people. City leaders ought to focus not only on service delivery, but on efforts also that create sense of participation and belonging. And that's what the brother was talking about uh, when he alluded uh, and emphasizes what does it mean to have a sense of belonging and for the benefit for all community members, but also cities are places where community members live uh, and, and day-to-day -day activities and, and that's where their lives happen. And that's where we see increase of Islamophobia has shown up, you know, even in my city and every other city. So we need to recognize the discrimination facing many of our community members and really standing up to hate. This is particularly important in the anticipation of the increased immigration and migration to cities and the being in mindful of the disruptions this could lead because of, of the, uh, the differences. So I envision that a, a, to have a built environment and where cities uh, really emphasize more on community connection and a contact, because if we increase the contact, that is when the relationship builds and say, oh, you think like me and your family is like me, my children goes to school. So it brings that relational aspect of it. And, and cities has to really play a role how to increase that contact. So it's great to see such conversation happening today. And we should call Islamophobia when we see it. As city of Victoria, we joined other cities showing solidarity and support even financially speaking out to laws that will have had ripple effects on the Canadian citizens' safety and ability to exist in public spaces as Bill 21. I'm so grateful the leadership of our mayor, Mayor Helps, who always shows up for our community. On this National Day of Remem uh, Remembrance and Action on Islamophobia, although she had her own family challenge. Still, she was able to make statement and a video. I, I just wanna quote one of her statement. As the mayor said, on the fifth anniversary of this terror attack, the city of Victoria is joining other cities across Canada to light up city hall in a green, a sign of our commitment to Muslims in Victoria that we have not forgotten this horrible act and to signify that we recognize the ongoing discrimination that our Muslim community members experience. And that is the words of uh, Mayor Lisa Helps. And also Mayor Lisa Helps, with myself last October, we worked with Muslim women from the community to explore themes of Islamophobia, belonging, racism, and safety. By then organizing themselves, and sharing with all local, local leaders in the regional district of Greater Victoria, their everyday experience in the capital region. And they were inspired by their calls to action from the National Summit of Islamophobia that took place in July, 2021. And the panel was amazing. Business leaders, uh, service providers, and all local leaders and government in the region have joined and that organized by the Canadian Urban Institute. And at city, uh, we're not only making a statement, we also doing the work. We have co-developed a welcoming city strategy, which would serve the city of Victoria roadmap to guide uh, Victoria toward a becoming a strong and more inclusive community where everyone, including newcomers, immigrants, and refugees, is accepted, respected, and feels they belong. So I'm privilege to co-chair this initiative with the mayor and with community leaders such as the police, the public library, service providers, indigenous leaders, and ethno-cultural groups. The city of Victoria also established the Equity and Diversity Inclusion Office to work with all city departments to look inside us to really see in-house how we can remove barriers and to also embed 
equity policies, programs, and services to advance the, the removal of systematic barrier. This office is developing equity framework that will a, apply an equity lens to all city operation programs and services. Because at the end of the day, what we want is when our community interact with city services, they have a positive experience. Just to end uh, with this statement about how we'll address Islamophobia in this is that if we all come together and cities and city leaders really proactively participate how they can increase participation, sense of belonging and increase contact of our community. So thank you for having me and it's amazing to see all the leaders and I want to recognize as a Muslim leader for your solidarity. So thank you. And I look forward working with you alongside with you as we create prosperous and inclusive British Columbia and Canada. Thank you. Thank you, Shukran, Brother Shamarke, for sharing your unique perspective uh, as both an elected official uh, and a Muslim at the municipal level uh, of what it takes to address uh, this shared concern and challenge of Islamophobia. We appreciate you sharing your voice with us today and look forward to continuing working together to address this uh, challenge. Um,